Hello everyone, my name's Pete and I'm playing MMOs because I don't like them. And no, it's not so I can be angry and be the old man that yells at a cloud. It's to understand what it is that motivates me to say I don't like them. So far, I've been pleasantly surprised at the variation on offer and playing with an open mind has brought me to realise that I was just being plain ignorant. So if this journey of discovery is interesting to you, then consider pressing subscribe and you can follow me into the unknown. Well, for me it's unknown anyway. A couple of weeks ago, I stepped into Star Wars The Old Republic and despite not being a fan of the franchise, I had a damn good time. This week I'm visiting Middle Earth and I'm quite a big fan of that so I've got high hopes. As a disclaimer, I have already played this fairly recently but not too extensively and while I enjoyed it, I didn't take notes or organise my thoughts. And so I'll be trying an alternate class and starting area so what I'm seeing should still be relatively new to me. The game launches with an advert for the cash shop which is in quite poor taste really. I understand your game is free to play and supplements revenue with this kind of system, but it's a hard sell to show me things before I know if they benefit me. Then I go to create my character, and as a bit of a shift from a human warrior, I make a dwarven spellcaster. Yes, a dwarf that uses magic. Some of you Tolkien purists are already mad. I can feel it, but it's just a game, so please calm down. The class I've chosen is Runekeeper, and it's one of two magic classes available. However, the Lawmaster class is locked for dwarves. Each race and class has a short video that will give some information on them, and they're short and sweet and a nice way of avoiding text dumps. Although the text dumps still exist if that's your thing. I then get to choose an origin from a dwarf, which, rather surprisingly, also dictates the range of hair colours available to me. Other than that, I'm fairly certain that it's just a flavour choice and won't affect the gameplay. Alongside a randomised button for character customization, there's also a name generator, and I like this. Although it turns out that it does spit out names that are already taken, and that means that it's likely almost useless at this point. My usual name is taken by my original character, and my backup name gets flagged as inappropriate. So say hello to Shortbeat. Yes. Quick as a flash, I'm given control, and whilst Gandalf stands expectantly before me, I'm given a text tutorial on how to move. In fact, all the tutorials are given in this format. It's not a particularly good tutorial system, but it is at least contextual with what I'm about to be doing, so the learning is backed up with practical examples. Gandalf introduces himself, and then compliments me on my fine name, and asks me to walk with him. Except I can't walk, I can only run, so I have to do this awkward stop-start to keep pace and read the text over his head. We meet some familiar dwarves and it looks from the dialogue that we're joining these fine fellows just before their journey that takes place in The Hobbit. Gandalf speaks of his choice of a 14th party member, being none other than Bilbo Baggins himself, and claims that Thorin won't be pleased with the choice. Lots of big names from the franchise appear here in this sequence, including Gimli bidding his father farewell on the journey before Thorin's company departs, as our story will be told here in the mountains. There's a large rumble and I'm shown how to equip a weapon and attack before I'm sent into the mine to help out the miners from the collapsing tunnels. As we enter, Gimli goes one way and I go the other, instructing the miners to leave on the way through the tunnels. I meet up with a foreman who tells me there's a dwarf who is hard of hearing further in. Apparently the gate to where he's working is locked, which is really weird, so we take an alternate path where we see him mining across the way. He gives the wall one last swing and it collapses and a troll bursts through. The deaf dwarf, Tvista, which is a funny name, courageously confronts the troll and politely asks him to leave the mine. The troll responds by squashing him with his giant club and then Gimli taunts the troll into chasing him. Then we go back to the lock gate and just smash it open because now it's an emergency. Before, wasn't quite enough of an emergency. The tunnel that Gimli went down has collapsed too and so I have to go where the troll came from. In here, I find this evil looking dwarf corpse that's described as perfectly preserved. And then there's an interesting scene with the troll as Gandalf shows up and puts a large crack in the mountain, letting the sunlight turn the troll to stone. Gorma, who Thorin left in charge, finds a trinket on the ground and then was swooped 75 years into the future. I did wonder how the time gap would be accounted for here, as my human character started at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring in the timeline, so this explained a lot. I'm now given a text dump that explains the quest tracking and tells me that I can track up to 5 quests with it. This is quite nice as it keeps the directional stuff confined to the minimap and doesn't take up too much screen space. So far the combat has been very generic MMO stuff, I haven't quite worked out how to increase my damage output using the spells correctly, but I'll give it time for me to learn. Aside from that, the visuals and the music have been really quite gorgeous. 75 years later and the mountain is now in the control of the evil Dowerhand Dwarves. I'm not sure how this happened and I can only assume that Gorma has gone rogue or something during Thorin's absence. I'm now part of a company of dwarves who have been sent to meet with a party of elves who have turned up in the region and we are to assist them. I get an inventory management tutorial which I immediately close because I'm old enough to know there's no such thing as a tidy inventory. And then I speak to one of Elrond's sons to try and help him solve the riddle which led the elves here. I speak to some of his companions who make some loose connections from the riddle to the surroundings 
friends, and we decide the best place to start would be where I found the body of the dwarf, who just so happened to be King Skorgrim, who had tried to achieve immortality by stealing elven relics many, many years before. Then I level up and there's a pretty flourish of snow around me. I'm told to visit my class trainer, and I do so hoping to learn something about the ins and outs of my combat mechanics, but I'm told to cast one spell at a training dummy and that's all. A text dump does explain that chaining offensive spells together will increase their effectiveness, and the same happens for chaining healing spells. After this, I pay attention to the bar on screen and it all makes a little more sense and it's actually a pretty neat system. The early introduction of this mechanic sets the early game quite a lot apart from World of Warcraft for me, despite the functionality of combat being identical. This view of the mountain is absolutely spectacular. So we enjoy it for a while, and then I'm headed into a ruined elven city. Abandoned elven architecture is something that isn't often displayed in Lord of the Rings, and paired with this gorgeous soundtrack, it's quite a haunting walk. I speak to the elves who have scouted ahead, and it pains them all to return to this place. One of the elves explains that the place we found Skorgrim's corpse was the basement of the library here, and he remarks that a strange plant seems to be growing in these parts. I'm told I should head back to where I found the body to begin searching for answers and then I fall off the bridge and break my leg. This injury has negative impacts on my combat abilities and it's in place of fall damage, meaning that I can use falling off edges strategically to save time and you're damn right I'm gonna be using this. Any of you coming here from a Guild Wars 2 video may be pleased to know that I'm now learning to use my mouse buttons for movement, so maybe you can stop laughing at me for a minute. I noticed as I was walking that it's very unusual for an elf and a dwarf city to occupy the same mountain. It seems like the route in and out of elves would see them walking through the dwarven gates and that's quite odd. I get back to the mine and there are a couple of buttons for me to press in the bottom corner. One is a pending loot bag which holds any loot from my kills. This is a nice feature as it lets me fight and explore first and loot afterwards. The loot lasts an hour which is plenty of time for me to remember that it exists. There's also a button to reveal layered instances for areas so if a friend was playing in the same place but on a different quest path I could use this button to join them and that's pretty neat. Despite not spending long here there's an odd feeling about walking through the same caves with a different lighting effect. Unsurprisingly I find the corpse of the dwarf king is gone however more of these odd plants are scattered where he lay. I wander further in to see that the troll is indeed still there however no matter how hard I try I can't get a look at his stupid face. I take my findings back to the elves who decide that these flowers are important to the riddle before. and I'm ordered to follow the trail of them to find out where the body was taken. So I do, and whilst out and about I realise that the overall sound design, not just the soundtrack, is absolutely spot on. For some reason I'm also picking the flowers whilst following them. The trail leads to one of the friendly dwarves spying on the evil dwarves. Look Apparently he asked to speak to Gorma but was turned this away. Despite this he believes that I'll be tolerated and it turns out he's quite correct. I'm given a pardon because it was me who discovered Skorgrim's body, and this pleases the Dowerhands. The rest of the party, however, are not welcome here. I'm given a few quests by Gorma and his buddies and offered the chance to look at the shrine to Skorgrim they've erected. One of the side quest markers is pointing a good walk away, but the music and visuals stop this from being a boring task. The world is stunning to be in and explore. The map is a little dated, but it's functional and offers a few quest filtering mechanics, including colour coding the markers for convenience. I reach my quest marker and I enter the cave to discover that this cave and the entrance at the bottom of the hill both lead to the same place. So I do the cave backwards and discover that the environments inside as well as outside are really well designed. After these tasks, I head back to the dwarf company to find that everyone's getting sick. I'm sent to explore the reasons for this, and I'm noticing that every quest has been kill or collect X, and while that's bad, the narrative and the world design are superb, and that makes up for it. Combat is by far the weakest feature of the game, but unfortunately, it's also one of the most used ones. What sets this apart from World of Warcraft and keeps me interested is the reason for my character to exist and my connection to the world. I find out that the source of the river has been poisoned, and this is making the dwarves sick. I'm sent to find the source of the poison and a possible cure. I have to walk through an industrial site and the dwarves are working and impossibly sized machinery is chugging and spluttering and this really helps the world to feel alive. I hit level 5 and I gain a title for reaching this milestone without dying. The title system I assume to be rather extensive if such a small task grants one. In fact, I know that a title is awarded roughly every 20 minutes of play, and that's from experience. At the top of the mountain, I'm greeted by one of Elrond's twin sons, and I'm told that in this cave I will find a reason for the poison and possibly a cure. It's rather convenient, but I'll take it. I head inside to find medicinal herbs and whites and ghosts and a strange altar that when triggered brings forth a nasty looking ghost. I take these herbs back to the dwarves and on the way I'm told to choose a specialization, which branches my class out into healer or two different types of DPS. I choose the burst damage option as it seems like the smartest idea for almost entirely solo play and I gain some new abilities that I'll need to learn to add into my rotation. I'm told to get some rest 
and when I do, I'm visited in my dreams by Galadriel, who shows me some important beats from the Lord of the Rings tale that I could be involved in in the future. She also tells me that I'm special, and that my fate is tied to the fate of Middle-earth, which sounds meaningful, but when you think about it, the fate of the whole land will decide everyone's fate too. After the dream, I'm told we're now strong enough to stop the ritual that the Dowerhands want to perform to resurrect Skorgrim and I get a warning that I should finish any ongoing quests because this one is the end of my introduction section. Clicking travel now launches me into an epic instance where we confront Gormir and his lackeys, fail to stop the ritual, watch as Skorgrim is resurrected and swiftly abandons the Dower Hands, and we join forces with the elves to escape the crumbling ancient Dwarven Hall. Other highlights include this manual door override and the caving tunnels. This whole scene is really well put together, but annoyingly it's punctuated by the fighting sections, which, as a result of the clunky combat, really hamper the pacing of the event. After this, I'm spat out into another hub and ready for more questing. And I think I'll stop here for now. This game is great for storytelling and exploring. The environments and sounds complement each other wonderfully, and this really helps carry interest over the mediocre gameplay. I've already given this game a go and decided that this was the case, and then coming back to look more closely confirms this for me. Lord of the Rings Online is a typical World of Warcraft clone, but I think it's better. Mechanically, it's identical, but it has a much more engaging world. I might come back with more to say on this, but I'm also going to be working through my list. If you want more, then you can consider subscribing, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.